It's your girl, Courtney with a K. Welcome back to my channel. I'm here to deliver some information about summer enrichment. School is almost out and your kids are about to be at your house and you out of house at home. Well, I can't speak for your kids. I just know that Cruz is probably already eating all of my food <laughs> currently. But before you completely check out and check into summer, let's make sure that we have our summer enrichment plans lined up. Every summer since Cruz has been in school, I have made a point to keep his brain active by providing him some type of summer enrichment. And summer enrichment is simply me providing him opportunities to learn and continue learning um, coursework over the course of the summer. You can beat the summer slump by either enrolling your child into a summer camp or providing the learning materials yourself. Uh, this year is going to be the first year that I will be enrolling Cruz in a math camp, but I will be providing his ELA uh, reading support here from home. So I'll be sharing with you a list um, that I will make sure that I put in the video description. The list will be a list here for Greenville, uh, Spartanburg, as well as Newberry County, um, various summer camps and various materials that you can use to help supplement your child's learning over the course of the summer. Okay, so first I wanna start with the material that I typically use here at home. Amazon is like my best friend. So <laughs> everything that I purchase or everything that you can find available on amazon.com or you probably can also find it at your local teacher shops like educational workshops and things of that nature. But um, I'm just gonna share with you what I've previously done in the past. Generally, in the past, I've kept it like an hour or two hours, Monday through Thursday, alternating the content. So like on Monday and Wednesday, I would focus on ELA, and then on Tuesday and Thursday, I would focus on math, or Tuesday, I would focus on math, Thursday, I would focus on science, things like that. So just whatever I felt needed to be supplement it. Typically, I will, again, use the iRating detail report to assist me in finding the things that Cruz really needs to focus on, finding those areas of improvement, and then finding course material that will actually support it. So in Cruz's iReady report, it told me that he needed some assistance with reading comprehension when it comes to literary text, as well as informational text. So I would purchase a book like this, this is reading comprehension. This is actually what I used last year. And as you can see, it just kind of provides you uh, a passage and then like questions that he can answer. So like you can get like a package deal where you get several items. These are like workbooks that they can actually write in or you can make copies if you have multiple children. You can use the same material. You can use the book as like your answer key and you can go in and before you put the answers on it, of course, you can go in and like make copies of it so that you can have those copies for your other children as they progress. Every summer I purchase him the um, Brain Quest workbook. It covers um, science, math, and reading at ELA. And I would have him do like a few pages out of it. Use like the little, the little uh, page sticky notes and I'll go through prior to, um, you know, giving it to him and like put a sticky note on all the pages I want him to complete. And it's usually everything that, skills that he needs to strengthen, like areas of improvement for him. For his confidence, of course, I will provide, I will like sticky note things that I know that he knows just as a refresher, because it's also good to kind of build their confidence. You don't want them to work the entire summer on things that are challenging for them, because that can kind of, discourage them and it can also give them like a, a discouraging feel when it comes to learning and you don't want to do that. A variety of topics are covered. These are fun. They provide like a map in the front where they can kind of like use the map as a coursework and put stickers as they complete the different um, sessions in it. So it's kind of like a game, you know, in that way because like kids get badges and things like that. So it can be interesting for children that are like in elementary. They might actually like something like this. And um, I typically always get the grade that he is coming from because uh, so like this, I purchased this for him last year going into the fifth grade because it's like fourth grade level content. So you should know that content. So it should be easy for you to kind of, it shouldn't be easy for you, but you should be able to kind of like generally know most of this stuff. It shouldn't really challenge you that much. And it just kind of provides that refresher that he needs going into the fifth grade. 
because again, teachers being that I was a former, formerly a teacher, uh, we spent a lot of time August, September, October trying to refresh the kids' memories and trying to wake their brains up. And so it was a lot of refresher, a lot of review of the past. And so this is a way to kind of like already have his brain engaged. And when he goes in come August, it's like, oh, okay, well, like I just went over this. I just reviewed this with my mom. So I kind of like knew this. So it's just a good way to enrich their skills. Um, in the past, again, this is kind of elementary level. Cruz is going into the sixth grade. So a lot of these things are, you know, from elementary, but sight words. Um, I would normally go through these. That's why he always tests out when it comes to high frequency words, because he does sight words. Like he would do sight words all the time. Um, and I, I would even Google high frequency words for his grade level. And then I'll get a list of those and I make my own makeshift flashcards on index cards. And I will make him you know, become acquainted with those words based off of whatever his grade level is. So you can just simply Google high frequency words, fifth grade, high frequency words, fourth grade, whatever grade level your child is in and that will assist them too. Uh, last year, I didn't purchase multiplication cards. I actually just got like a, a bulk of index cards and I took the time to write out all of the multiplication one times one and do it like that um, to kind of assist him with multiplication. So um, you can make this stuff yourself and have them review however you know you see fit for them to review. I shared with my girlfriends that Cruz was having some issues with math and I just wanted to find a way that I can kind of strengthen his math skills going into the sixth grade. And a friend of mine actually recommended, like, you know, like, oh, look into a, a summer camp. And so I started Googling summer camps and I felt that this would be really helpful for other parents who may be interested too. There are gonna be several camps that I will be sharing. And I'm just really gonna share the link here. Um, I'm gonna scroll here and you'll kind of see the various camps here that are available in Greenville, South Carolina in surrounding areas. And if you're interested in that, that link will be below. Um, this is actually Kidding Around Greenville and it has like a variety of sources, resources available to you. Like even if you wanna like plan a birthday party and you're not really sure what venues or what to do, it has like a list of different venues and different things that you could do for a birthday party. So it's a very helpful website if you're in the Greenville area. I also wanted to share different things that are available here in Spartanburg. So some of these camps that I'm going to be showing you are from here in Spartanburg. They're actually free. So all camps, you know, aren't these ridiculous prices of like $100, $150 for your kids. You can actually send them to some of these camps for free. And then some of the camps offer scholarships that if you get in there early enough and you apply for the scholarship, you can pretty much allow your child to go to the camp, you know, close to nothing. And so I'm telling you, first come, first serve. It's the beginning of June. Schools are just starting to let out. Go ahead and check out some of these websites. Uh, again, the video, the links are listed in the video description. Check some of these camps out and send your kids to camp. Lastly, I want to highlight the camps that are available at Newberry. I actually have this listed in a note, but I'll make sure to leave all of the links that are available. And I'll make sure to like highlight that these are from Greenville, this is Spartanburg, this is Newberry, so that there isn't any confusion as to what camp is what. But again, all of these camps are, many of them are first come, first serve, they have spots. So make sure that you jump on it, go ahead and check it out. If you're interested, register if you're interested, but you know, kind of on a budget, look into, you know, give them a call, look into seeing if they have any scholarships available so that you can send your child. Do not allow the fact that a price tag is associated with it to deter you from actually checking in and seeing if they have any scholarships or any type of programs available so you can still send your child. Um, how to determine what camp would be most beneficial? I would probably first start with uh, those areas of improvement based off of your child's eye ready detail report. What areas of improvement, what would actually strengthen them? Would it be best for them to go to like a reading English language arts camp or would it be best for them to go to a math camp? So I would always start with the areas of improvement. If you see that your child really doesn't have an area of improvement, then I would move to interests. What interests your child? Is your child love, does your child love science? Does your child love math? Does your child love um, arts, you know, or dance or uh, computers or STEM or, you know, whatever your child is interested in, 
first, like strengthen that interest and, and, and support their desire to learn in that area by sending them to a camp that they're actually interested in. Because if your child is interested or if your child needs that help, this camp could probably benefit them in a great way. I hope that you guys can use this information to kind of enrich your children's summer this summer. Um, I know kids are probably over school, I get it, but an hour a week, some of these camps are just for a week, some of them are, you know, for a month, you know, various times. And even at home, if you're doing it at home, you can decide what works for your child. Cruz um, gets two weeks of like no no school work. So he just got out this past Friday. So this week and next week he is free. <laughs> He's free as a bird. He can do whatever he wants to do. He is kind of still on a schedule, but for the most part, I'm not shoving a book in his face. But come the second, third week in June, he is going to be reading, he's gonna be writing, he's gonna be doing math. So, um, and that's just to kind of help him and to benefit him. He may not see the benefit of it right now, but he will thank me later and your children will as well. So I hope that this information has been helpful. Make sure that you hit the like button on this video. Also, drop a comment if there's any information or any questions that you have. If there are any uh, camps that you are aware of that I didn't include, drop those, you know, drop them in the comments, you know, let us all know, like, let this be a resource for everyone in the area. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell for post notifications so you don't miss any other videos that are like this one. So thank you again, and I hope that you take care of you. Bye.